This is the Finnish M61 V2. gentlemen welcome to episode three of how come but effective is it today we are talking about the finnish m61 yes that finland the plucky little country that beat back the soviet union thanks to one farmer however we are talking about a mask from the 1960s and it being a copy of the american m9 mask so the question is is the mask any good and is it combat effective well here's the thing the mask backstory, and I'm not going to go into great detail, if you want a detailed backstory, either go watch Weapons and Stuff video or any other video about the M6, an actual good quality video of the M61. But no, right? this one's actually rather interesting, to say the least, because here's the thing. The M61 I'm holding here is a V2. The V1 was a direct copy of the M61. And even how they got an M61 in the first place was because Finland kind of on a budget constraint when it came to military spending. So they looked at the M9, and they said, that's a cool idea. And since technically the M9 was discontinued, I, be I believe by this point the M9 was continued, discontinued. You can correct me in the comment section, of course. They jumped on the idea of this thing, and they got it. However, the first copy not so great they didn't like how it was they didn't exactly like how it was all set up all that good jazz and they were like we fixed this we fixed this very much so they went with the version 2 here which the version 2 is actually really good and has been in a lot of tv shows and movies even uh from the 70s all the way up to the 90s which is actually really cool now the m61 v2 is pretty good. However, the last final one was the final perfection, the, the piece de resistance, which was the M61 V3, which was made by Nokia. Yes, that Nokia, uh, Nokia, the one that made the phone where you could literally kill someone with it. Even just an amazing phone company in general that, that made amazing cell phones. But that made it really cool was that it had a voice box on it as well as an XL valve but just like the cell phones that voice box is hard to destroy this mask is hard to break because it's very modular I'm not even joking when I say that what you can do is you can actually undo these clamps right here as you can see the little silver part kind of undo it pull out that part replace the part lock it back down and done and it works I'm not joking it works and the filters themselves they are safe uh, relatively speaking, if they're compromised, don't use them. However, the mask, uh, while the filters will not give you any sort of chemical protection, they will give you particulate protection, which is actually really nice. So, say you're going through a very heavy, dusty area, the filters will work. And I have actually worn these fil well, this particular filter uh, through very heavy pollen uh, years while working outside and even working in very dusty areas, and it is almost full to a point. I'm, giving, I'm having a hard time breathing through this filter, so yeah, this filter we won't use. Now, another, a little trick that I learned actually is that if you're getting some leaks through the mask, well, do this. And this is the filter that came with it. Take some Teflon tape or some uh, plumber's tape and wrap around it. It will help seal off the rain. And what's actually nice is that looking at the two differences, this one from the 89, this one from the late 80s, or 89 to be exact, you can see a stark difference in the way, let me set the mask down, and the way the filters are designed, which is actually rather nice. I do like that, uh, especially in the way it's designed. Like, this one's a more flattened area. This one's more rounded at the top. So, kind of cool. Uh, just, just a little nitpick, just a little thing I thought I'd kind of talk about. But, speaking of which, this is a 60 millimeter threaded mask, so you are going to need 60 millimeter filters. However, you can use a 60 to 40 millimeter converter to use all 40 millimeter NATO ma uh, NATO filters. So yeah, there you go. Now, 
go ahead and screw this on. Get the filter in there. Now besides the filter itself, you do have this directional blower, which, is, which you can use to direct blowing out. Now, the mask is a six-point mask, a six-point harness, which is very nice. It does have an inner mask, so that way if you're not a size three, at least the mask will get a little better to your face. And it does have a very amazing oral nasal cup. Let me just go ahead and get this up, which is very good. However, communications is where it gets a little bit hairy. Let me get the mask on and, well, before I get the mask on, one final thing I want to say. Because of the triangular lens that it uses, you not only get a great depth of field, but you can also use, of course, the ballistic lens that come with M17s. So yes, you can put the M17s on here, as you're about to see in a second. Now that we have the mask on, as well as the M60, as well as the uh, protective lens on, now we can actually talk about something that's actually really cool. Now, I know you can somewhat hear me through the uh, little pseudo voice diaphragm right here, which is the blower. But I think I am going to take the blower off so you guys can actually hear me a little better. Now, here's the thing. The mask itself is actually very comfortable, I'm not going to lie. And it holds really close to the face, which is really nice. And a much better improvement over the M9, from what I understand from a lot of videos talking about the M61. Well, the V2, anyway. Until I actually get an M9 in my collection, as well as to uh, rate whether it's combat effective or not, it'll be hard to judge. Now, in terms of the communication, I actually did take this in the battle, and you can actually hear me visibly clearly talking with the other teammates, and they actually could hear me. Now, in terms of headgear, you can actually wear headgear with this. The straps, unless we're talking about the back ones here, which uh, could be... A little better, in my opinion, but you can't actually wear an assortment of hair wear with this because those straps do not get in the way as much. So, let's take a simple dog in here. Okay, that's one thing. What about a helmet? You will have to loosen the strap a bit, but it does actually hold on fairly well. I'll have to do that in a second, but no discomfort. It actually does hold down fairly well to the mask. A little bit you know, low in there, but Grant, this is a bump-style helmet. Uh, a a, a high-speed helmet, more or less. Now, you are seeing this right here. This is a little trick I learned from some other airsoft players who do play with gas masks. And they'll take either Gorilla Tape or Flex Tape and just kind of do one simple, like, this pattern over the lens. Now, this doesn't exactly impede your vision. Not at all. And while, yes, uh, in the combat footage you're going to see me spraying and praying, that's because I went a little overboard with the tape and put a little too much on. It caused a little bit of a uh, issue visually. But I've learned my lesson, and I'm going to learn not to do that ever again. Now. Let's shoulder weapons and show you, you know, how many weapons this thing can actually shoulder. So let's go with a M16. Because this was the primary firearm that I actually used. At least this is the primary model that I used for most of the combat testing. Then everyone and their mother owns an AR-15, so, you know, there's that. And I can see the optic. Going to the iron sights? I can line up the iron sights. We got iron sights. If anything, I have to. I can just do like this. Which, if you're pulled up on a building like this, then yeah, you're good basically. Okay, now let's go with an AR-15, or at least an M4 model. Now this one has the crane stock, so you know, a little bit interesting. Depending on how you're going at it from the angle, you can line up your iron sights. By the way, this mask is a dream. Like, the actual Tisso system, it's amazing. It feels like you have your own personal AC unit in, in your mask. And it doesn't fog up at all, which is really amazing. Okay, now let's go with the other side of the world. Now, this mask was designed for the RK, or the, um, the Finnish version of the AK-47. So, 
Let's grab an AK-47 and see how that does. Well, you got to really get sighted in for 300 yards, but yeah, no, you can get a good sight picture with it. You really can. You just gotta get. You just gotta make sure the sight is up there, more or less. Now let's go with an AK-12. How does it do with that? The sight's a little closer, so you know what? we could probably get a good uh, sight picture. A little, just just a wee bit, so just a little bit, just just a wee bit, not too much though. But yeah, no, having an optic on here would be better, and you'd be able to get a much more better sight picture with an AK-12 style platform. Now let's go with some bullpups. Oh, Christian, before I actually go to the bullpups, let's go with the G36. How does it do with the G36? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I, I'm getting an actual sight picture. Yeah, no joke, guys. They're perfect sight picture. That is amazing. Granted, it's the design of it, but still, it works out really well. Alright, to my Israeli friends. Let's see how it does with a Tabor. Eh, not that great with iron sights. Now, if you had, uh, if you had an optic on here, yeah, no, no problem optic wise but uh with the current iron side setup not so good china with a type 95 uh, somewhat okay i guess really whatever and then my friends in britain the dreaded L85 or the SAA. Oh, let's see how it shoulders. Actually, surprisingly well. Holy shit. No joke. It actually does shoulder pretty damn well. Holy shit. Huh. Alrighty then. Now, finally, just for shits and giggles, a revolver carbine. Yeah, like, no joke. It does pretty well. Alright, folks, let's jump over to the combat footage. Well, let's jump over to the testing footage and the combat footage, and then we'll get back to our final verdict. Alright? Alright.
You all right there, Pop? Good. Now I'm going to check down by the creek, see if they're trying to flank. I'm going to try and flank him, okay? With everything said and done, I think the question is, what is this mask, is it effective? And while yes, some will say, no, it's not effective because it doesn't have a drinking tube. No, it's not effective because it doesn't have a proper voice diaphragm. It's not effective because of the big schnoz on there making you look like a Jew. And in reality, I gotta disagree with all those guys. 
I mean, okay, yeah, no, a drinking tube would be a good thing, but in reality, this is something someone would buy for the cheap because they don't want to spend the money on something a little bit more expensive. They want to buy this as a prepper mask or something to give to the kids to make sure they're all right or something to get to help fight their way out of a riot. And yes, I have actually talked with guys who have these and they and those in Venezuela, there are some people who do have the M61 in Venezuela and they do actually fight government forces down there while wearing these things. And if that doesn't say it enough, this is something you want to get as a last-ditch effort in case someone throws tear gas through your window, and you have to fight through it. This isn't meant to be a long-term fighting mask like in World War I. This is meant to put on and help fight your way out, or help fight your way to your objective. And with the great visual view, no joke, with the mask on, I was able to get a good, solid this. What you're going to be doing with this mask is more or less fighting this way. And yes, you're going to want to have teammates watching your, essentially, 3 and 9 o'clock. But, but, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm rambling by this point in time. This mask, in this credit, in this guy's opinion, is effective. It does the job. It gives you a visual range. You're able to shoulder a variety of firearms with this mask. And it's not that expensive. I mean, granted, okay, some are pretty damn expensive online, if you can find it, but the majority of them are around or under $40. So you can find this for relative cheap. And you can find them a lot in tons of military surplus stores. So in my opinion, if you want a mask that is not going to fail you and is going to be good for you, I recommend the M61 to anyone who wants a good prepper mask or a good mask to give to your rebel forces to overthrow the communist government. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, and episode four of How Combat Effective is the Israeli civilian mask. You voted. Here we go. Let's do this.